good evening everybody and welcome to the video this video i'm going to be talking about elastic search and its security so we are going to be implementing aws cognito with elastic search on amazon web services so essentially node to node encryption enable https then essentially having um, a cognito to authenticate the user so that they can use kibana dashboard we also want to do find and access which means we we don't want to we want to give particular user a particular access so for example user a only has read access user b may be having an admin access right so we want to do all that so let's get started with the video and um, yeah so i'm on my dashboard here on elastic search before that let me check my billing i'm making sure i am not generating a massive bill because i've been trying a lot of cool things on elast uh, on amazon and uh, as you know okay so not crazy uh, things are great uh so let's go to open search open search all right so i would ha head over to the open search tab very easy uh come here uh so one one of my instances being deleted that's fine not a problem so now i'll come here and say youtube Okay, so that's that. We'll select development here, which is very, very important. We'll select Elasticsearch 7.10. Again, very important. Very, very important for learning purpose. You don't want to select. Uh, we'll select a small instance, T3 small, with uh, EBS as 10 gigabytes. The rest of everything, we'll leave it to default. We'll make it public access. We'll have fine grain access, of course. Um, enable fine grain access, that's fine. Creating a master user. We could do that, or we can set up an on will will essentially go for create a master user for now so i put in the username password i'll click on enable um, authentication uh, uh, i've enabled cognito uh, remember i do not have a user pool so the first thing we'll do is create a user pool i'll open this on a new tab and follow along with me okay so YouTube help learn will put um, user pool review defaults and create a pool. Very easy. Uh, this this step is very self-explanatory. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is the uh, I need to register a domain. So I'll put this. Let's see if this domain is available. Check. Okay, it's available. Click on save changes. Good to go. Um, so that's that now what we need to do is we need to go to yes yeah, find it will automatically create the one so now here youtube which one did i create why is it youtube lq sir pull okay because that one is still being deleted not sure why it's showing up showing up but okay so that's that now i will click on a federated identity so we'll open up again cognito on a new tab put in YouTube Elklum, put the same name instead of this, we'll put Fed. All right, um, uh, that's good. Uh, here, I need to put in a, uh, a user pool and app client ID. Heading back, I don't have an app client, so I'm gonna create an app client. Hold on, let me just verify uh, security. Yeah, that's fine. We we click here. Uh, this is my app client. Uh, this is my uh, yeah. I know it's wrong. Why oh, it wouldn't allow me? First, I have to put the user pool. So we'll go to general and copy this one here. Head over to app client. Copy, paste. Okay, create now should be asking me i am I'll, I'll do that quickly <clears throat> so that's that i'll add the alias one two three four five so i can identify things quickly can i edit that are you sure no no nah, it's fine so now that's that one two three four five okay let's do that click on allow and uh, sure enough it's created uh, head over back refresh that's the one that I want to select over here um, we'll, we'll, we'll use default we'll, so, uh, we'll, we'll choose do not set domain level but we'll later on change okay so that's that 
then i'm going to create the cluster this would take around uh, 15 to 20 minutes so i'm essentially going to pause the video and resume once i get back to once the cluster is created okay so uh, let's wait for the cluster to be created there are a couple of things we might have to tweak in but i'll i'll show you down down the line so i'm going to wait until this process is all right looks like my wait is over here uh, heading over to the dashboard and it looks like it's complete okay uh don't go to the link yet it's not going to work uh, so uh we do have to do some settings here okay so now the first thing we need to do is uh head over to the security and it would it says deny here right so we need to fix that um uh, before that as well we need to create a user and um so the first thing that i will do is i want to head over to the iam over here then uh remember we added an alias 1 2 3 4 so i'll head over to the role section uh somewhere down the line come on 1 2 3 4 auth role yeah so this one right so copy copy the arn okay copy this arn uh this my it looks like something like this so you know so now head over to the edit tab right now once you've done that set up an arn here then you want to edit change this to allow okay and then i think uh click on save so the first part is done yet next is the user pool right we we don't have a user pool we don't have a group as well excuse me so i'll create a group group call admins uh, this is essentially all the admin people uh i do not see my 1 2 3 4 here as you can see so what i'll do is i'll simply refresh so i'll refresh my uh browser here and after that i should see uh, so i don't want to create a user remember i want to go to groups create a group elk admins uh now let's try i should see yeah so now as you can see uh pool auth or 1 2 3 4 then you have a unauth one so i'll select the auth one and we click okay So uh that's that now you can see this group is assigned to an arn. So now user I'll uh, create a user and this will be my user called stacha put it here Oh I was typing my password <laughs> All right so we created a user right now this user needs to belong to a group so add a group I'll admin we have been added that so as you can see so far things are good okay so uh, that's that now i need to do couple of things here in the federated so i'll do that then only because otherwise if you're going to go to the link it's not going to work i have tried it so many times so uh edit click on the edit button here now here are the things that we need to do head over to the authentication now here uh, select choose role and token and click on deny and uh, do the same thing here as well uh and click on save changes on this part okay so now that's being saved okay great this is good now i think we have done all the changes that is necessary for elastic search heading back to dashboard okay youtube elk learn and just making sure everything is good clicking on security allow that looks good now remember the username we did set up right so um i'll uh, try to sign in sign in it, it should ask to change the password okay and all right i'll click on send and hopefully i shouldn't have any errors at this point and congratulations if you see open search dashboard uh congrats to congratulations i i really mean that so now that's that right so as you can see now here you have a security now i can manage users and and stuff now at this point this is great guys now remember uh how many ever users you have you can come to user and you can uh let's say now i want to give an access to a third guy right so let's say i want to give my colleague birendra or let's say jundal right so i can type their username here or you know simply create one i'll create one a test i'll um, set up a temporary password 
uncheck, uncheck. So that's been done. Now I can assign that to a group, Ad, admin group. So that's done. Now I can, you know, say, hey, guy, I, I mean, to the person, right? I can say, hey, take this URL and this is going to be a credential. So now when the guy comes in, now remember, he will put in test master one at the rate three, four, five. That's the default. Now he'll change the password. Okay, uh, whatever. Test at gmail.com. Okay, so he'll do test at gmail.com and sign in as test. And now he's the test user here. You can see. So now uh, you can create users for your, um, you know, uh, people, right? Now, um, so uh, in your code, in your Python code, how do you do that? Uh, so there's something called uh, when you create your client or your instance. Uh, you can pass in the auth. So let me show you quickly without wasting time. I just want to show you. Uh, okay, click on that one. So all you got to do is, yeah. So when you create an instance, just pass in the username and password. Um, that Remember, don't hard code. Come, should come from an environment variable, okay? All right, great. So that's great. Now, um, explore on my own, cancel. So this is great, right? Uh, now my people, I can, you know, create users uh, as I want. Now, the other beautiful thing that it allows me to do is essentially, it allows me to give fine grain access, right? So for example, uh, say I want to create a user with a limited access. So um, I, I will show you the steps, but uh, le let me just show you the gist of the idea. So let's say, So I, I did that, right? You could attach an arm here as well on the back end if needed, right? So I'm just creating a limited access. I'm just creating a user through Kibana at this point. So as you can see, I have a user, right? Now I could simply attach a role. For example, let's say I just want to give him a read access to Kibana. Or if you want to, um, you know, for example, if you want to get fancy and you say, hey, just give a CRUD permission or Kibana all read, search permission, get, right? There's a lot you can choose from, right? So. I'm choosing from uh, here and uh, for example if I want to give Kibana I can come here scroll up on the map user then I can click on manage mapping and then here I can select you know that limited user that I just created um, and that's pretty much it then I can click on map and that user has been created right now if you wanna you know go with arm based approach right so now what i'm trying to say is when you create user you can really fine grain their access so now that user will only have like a read and write access or you know so, so stuff like that one thing i want to show you um so of course this entire workflow ma made sense to you right one thing i do want to share here is essentially so i had one group on my cognito so sorry for the noise um elk admin so i wanna if you want to create a less um so for example when the user signed in right he was able to see the security tab if you don't want to do that and if you want to really like narrow down and only admins can do all that so you could do that by creating a, a, a group called so up to you however you want right you can create as many groups as you want for here now i'm selecting anoth and i'm gonna cl click on create uh why did it, it did not create oh yeah it takes a second or two so here now uh this test user i did attach to the group so um, hold on because remember a user can belong to multiple groups also okay and based on the precedence it will it will do the job okay so now what i want to do is i want to say create user test one Okay, uncheck, uncheck, uh, uncheck this one. Okay, so I did create a user called a test one and this will essentially belong to a group. This will be remember ALK uh, read access group. So I could do that now. Remember uh, this group has been assigned an ARM or IAM role. So which means you could find grain uh, over there, right? Now, when you create any user um, and you know, if the user goes with that credential there, uh, access would be essentially fine grain. So now again, doing in the same thing, but this is so, sort of a general idea, right? Uh, that's how you want to approach it. So 
test one. So now, as you can see, I've been logging in as a test user. I did fix that. Uh, I'll show you again. So I'll copy this URL. So now I'm essentially, I did assign that particular, you know, role to the test user. And now I'm trying to sign, sign in with that guy. So he wouldn't, he remember he has a less access, right? So I'll say test one. Here I'll select, um, uh, what did, what's the password? So I'll do that. Now I'm, I'm, I'm in at that user. This is my root, uh, this is my master, the admin who did the fine grain or whatever. So now if I come here, now I'm logged in as that guy. And as you can see, only has a read access. There is nothing that guy can visualize essentially, the security and all, all the other things. Let me zoom in a little bit. So that is a end-to-end -end demo that I really wanted to show you. I was struggling for a couple of weeks and I couldn't find it. Uh, no videos on the internet. There is no tutorial that teach this end-to-end, -end, right? There was nothing. I spent time and, and, and absolutely thanks to my co-worker, um, Jundel, who's from Philippine Cebu. Shout out. Thank you so much for showing me uh, and walking me through over the details. He essentially uh, is in, um, he, he works with cloud. He, he writes infrastructure as code that is Terraform. So he essentially showed me no Sommel. You have to do this way, no Sommel. You have to do that way. Thank you so much, Jundal. This is really helpful. I'm pretty sure now people who are watching this video will learn and appreciate the efforts. Thank you so very much for watching this video. Hope you have really, really enjoyed it. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and I would see you guys.